हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस क्वालिटी कंट्रोल इन रोड कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड देर आर सेवरल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ क्वालिटी इन रोड कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग कंट्रोल ऑफ अलाइनमेंट लेवल एंड सरफेस रेगुलरिटी एंड दीज आर डिफरेंट फॉर रूरल रोड्स एंड हाईवेज एंड देर फोर द प्रोविजन विच आर गिवन इन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रूरल डेवलपमेंट स्पेसिफिकेशन फॉर रूरल रोड्स टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड ऑल्सो इन द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाईवे स्पेसिफिकेशन फॉर रोड एंड ब्रिज वर्क इन टू थाउजेंड Quality control of construction materials and finished product is essential requirement for obtaining improved and uniform standard of road construction. And road construction specifications and estimates provide basis for effective quality control. In addition, quality control goes hand in hand with cost control. When we provide advanced planning and set quality standards early on. we reduce the risk of making costly mistakes once construction begins focusing on quality control can also improve the safety of a project and therefore both quality of material and quality of construction are important in this session we will focus on standards that are required to be met in respect of control of alignment that is horizontal alignment level and surface irregularities in a road project and as i told you standards for rural roads are slightly relaxed as compared to those for highways and we shall discuss provisions in give as given in both documents mord 2014 and morth 2013 the first aspect is horizontal alignment and this is to be considered with respect to the center line of the carriage way as shown on the drawings for example the tolerance in horizontal alignment is basically means maintaining the carriage way width according to the drawing and it should be ensured in construction of each layer so here if this is the carriage way width the tolerance here means that up to what standard this width has been kept in the final construction the permitted tolerance for edges of the carriage way and for the edges of the roadway as given in two books MORT 2013 and MORD 2014 are like this the edge of the carriage way shall be correct within a tolerance of plus minus 10 mm and the tolerance for the edges of the roadway and lower layer shall be plus minus 25 mm MORD 2014 says that in plain and rolling terrain the edge of the carriage way can be maintained with a tolerance of plus minus 20 mm and 30 and plus minus 30 mm in hilly terrain and similarly as of the roadway and lower layers is plus minus 30 mm in plain and rolling terrain and plus minus 50 mm in hilly terrain the requirement of horizontal alignment is important to get the correct width of the road type after construction surface levels are taken for each layer starting with the subgrade and these levels are compared with the longitudinal and cross profile of the road as shown on the drawing according to MORTH specifications 2013 the surface level for subgrade can vary in a tolerance of plus minus 20 mm from the approved drawing similarly for sub base in case of flexible pavement it can be plus minus 10 mm in case of concrete pavement it can be plus minus 6 mm and similar tolerances are given for other layers of a flexible pavement as well as rigid pavement for base course for flexible pavement bituminous base course or binder course it is minus 6 mm and granular base course when it is laid by machines it is plus minus 10 mm and it is manually laid it is plus minus 15 mm and for wearing course for flexible pavement it is plus minus 6 mm for machine laid layer and plus minus 10 mm for manually laid like pre mixed carpet and cement concrete pavement is plus minus 5 mm now mord specifications suggest a different type of tolerance for surface levels for sub base in case of flexible pavement it can vary from plus 10 mm to minus 20 mm and for sub grade it can be plus 20 mm to minus 25 mm similarly for concrete pavement 
when the sub base is used as dlc the trial in concrete or roller compacted concrete the tolerance can be from plus 6 mm to minus 10 mm base course for flexible pavement in case of bitumen course it is plus minus 6 mm in case of granular base it plus minus 10 mm or manually laid it is plus minus 15 mm bearing course for flexible pavement it is plus 6 mm for machine laid layer and plus minus 10 mm for manually laid and for cement concrete pavement is plus 5 mm to minus 6 mm while accepting the levels or tolerance limits of levels it should be remembered that the negative tolerance for wearing course shall not be permitted in conjunction with the positive tolerance for base course if thickness of the wearing course is reduced by more than 4 mm for bitumen course of thickness which is 40 mm or more or 3 mm for bitumen courses of thickness less than 40 mm and 5 mm for concrete pavement slab now these limits are 6 mm for flexible pavements and 5 mm for concrete pavements in case of low volume roads these are the guidelines given in MORTH specification and these are the guidelines given in MORD 2014 so what does it really mean it means like this that for a bituminous base course in a flexible pavement the tolerance permissible is plus minus 6 millimeter and for wearing course in a machine laid construction it is plus minus 6 percent so if i take an example that in a flexible pavement the difference in dbm layer is minus 5 millimeter and that in BC layer is plus 6 millimeter. So it does not in it does not reduce the thickness of BC layer here and therefore it is permitted and both are within the permissible limit. But if the difference in DBM layer is plus 6 millimeter and that in BC 50 millimeter layer is minus 5 millimeter, although this minus 5 millimeter is within the permissible limit of plus minus 6 millimeter, but it is creating a reduction in thickness of the BC by more than 4 millimeter and therefore it is not permitted. Now how do we check the compliance? For subgrade, subbase and base, we take measurements of the surface levels on a grid of points placed at 6.25 meter longitudinally and 3.5 meter transversely and this grid is at 10 meter by 2.5 meter for rural roads. So we make a grid on a base, subgrade and sub-base layer like this, where this length is 6.25 meter and this is 3.5 meter for a highway and 10 meter and 2.5 meter for rural roads. And we take the measure at each point at each point here and not more than one out of 10 measurements taken longitudinally or transversely should exceed the tolerance limit value. For bitumen wearing course and for cement concrete pavements, the measurements are taken on a grid of points placed at 6.25 meter along the length and 0.5 meter from the edge and at the center of the pavement. So here you take this as 6.25 for a bitmus layer, 6.25 and this is taken at 0.5 meter from the edge and also at the center of the roadway, center of the carriageway. Surface regularity of a pavement course can be measured using 3 meter straight edge or by moving a straight edge at the middle of each traffic lane along center line of the road. A 3 meter straight edge is a straight bar with a scaled, with a scaled wedge here. This bar is placed on the road and the gap between the road surface and the straight edge is measured using this wedge. Working with rolling straight edge is faster as it simulates a 3 meter rigid straight edge sliding along the road surface. It consists of a rigid frame supported on pneumatic or rubber tire wheels and it is pushed at a speed of 1 to 2 km per hour or you can say 17 to 33 meter per minute. 
and the number of irregularities, their length and distance from start are recorded. And there are several versions of rolling straight edge are available in the market. The tolerance limit for roll roads are given here for different types of layers. For subgrade, the maximum permissible undulations when measured with 3 meter straight edge should not be more than 20 millimeter in case of long tunnel profile and 15 millimeter in case of cross profile. And similarly, for sub base codes, it is 12 and 10 millimeter. And for different types of base courses, these values are given in MORD specifications. And for surface cores, different types of surface courses, stone set payment, surface dressing, premix carpet, mix seal surfacing, semi dense bitmus concrete, or cement concrete payment. These are the maximum permissible undulations when measured with 3 meter straight edge. The specification given in MORDH 2013 are slightly different. What it says that maximum permitted, permitted number of surface irregularities should not be more than these values. When irregularity is 4 millimeter or 7 millimeter, then in a length of 300 millimeter, the number of surface irregularity on National Highway and Expressway should not be 15 and number of surface irregularity on roads of lower category should not be more than 40. And similarly, this is for surfaces of lay service roads and all bitmus based courses. These are the values given in MORTH specifications. The maximum permitted difference between the road surface and underside of a 3 meter straight edge are given here for bituminous or concrete surface it should not be more than 3 millimeter for base cores 6 millimeter for granular base cores and sub base cores 8 millimeter for sub base under concrete pavement like DLC and roll compacted concrete 10 millimeter and for subgrade it can be maximum of 15 millimeter if irregularity in a layer is noticed more than the permissible limit then they must be rectified and MORTH specifications has suggested the rectification procedure for different layers. For subgrade and granular base subbase, it says where the surface is high, trim it and compact suitably and the degree of compaction and the type of material to be used will be as per original construction. When surface is low, scarify the lower layer and add fresh material and recompact to the required density. In case of stabilized soil base or sub base, where the sub base is high, trim it suitably, taking care that the material below is not disturbed due to this operation. When the surface is low and the time elapsed between the detection of irregularity and the time of mixing of material is less than two hours for cement treated material or three hours for lime treated material. Then scarify the surface to a depth of 50 mm and lay freshly mixed material as per specification. But when the time exceeds 2 hours for cement stabilized material or 3 hours for lime stabilized material, then it should be removed to the full depth and replaced with fresh material to the specification. In case of WBM and WMM base or sub base where the surface is high or low, top 75 mm will be scarified, reshaped with added material as necessary and recompact as per specification. In case of bituminous construction other than wearing cores, where the surface is low, correct it by adding fresh material or over a suitable tack coat if required and recompact it. When the surface is high, Remove full depth of the layer and replace it with fresh material as per specification. In case of bitmus bearing cores, where the surface is high or low, remove full depth of the layer and replace with fresh material as per specification. But we should remember that the area treated should not be less than 5 meter in length and 3.5 meter in width. That is a single lane width. In case of dry lane concrete or roll compacted concrete sub base in cement concrete pavement, remove the defective length of the course to full depth of the layer and replace with fresh material as per specification. And here also the area treated should at least be 3 meter long and not less than 1 lane wide. 
For cement concrete pavement, a regularity of 3 to 6 mm can be corrected by scrubbing or grinding of the surface using approved equipment. For high in excess of 6 mm or low in excess of 3 mm and the contract and, the, and when the contractor cannot rectify it, the slab should be demolished and reconstructed. In no case, the area removed shall be less than full width of the lane and full length of the slab. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you understood the tolerance levels for alignment and surface level. You can write your comments in the comment box.